Hello everyone. Welcome to Analog Electronic Circuits, lecture number 15, part number 2. So in today's lecture, we are going to solve a numerical on a cascade amplifier. So let's directly start. So a two-state circuit is shown below, having the MOSFET parameters as VTN1 is equal to VTN2 is equal to 5 volt, KN1 is equal to KN2 is equal to 120 microampere per volt square, and lambda 1 and lambda 2 is equal to 0. So we have to calculate the Q point for both the stages, AV1 and AV2, overall voltage gain AVT in dB, the output voltage if Vs is 20 millivolt peak to peak, and Rn and Rout, that is input and output resistance. So this is the circuit which we have given. Now take a moment and try to identify which cascade amplifier configuration it is. Just have a look at it. So the first stage is a common source amplifier. It is RC coupled to the second stage. First stage is RC coupled to the second stage. Second stage is also a common source amplifier. So let us start writing up the solution. Yeah, so first step is identification of your configuration. So basically it's a, we can start over here. It's a common source, common source, common source, RC coupled cascade amplifier. So step number one is identification of your cascade configuration. Now this is your CSCS RC coupled uh, cascade amplifier. Now, first of all, we have to find the Q point for individual stages. Now if you load, notice carefully, uh, the biasing registers for both the stages are similar. Even RD1 and RD2 are same, equal to three kilo ohm. RS1 is equal to RS2 is equal to 880 ohm. Even the bypass capacitor are similar, right? So that's why we can say that both the stages are having symmetrical parameters. Even the M1 and M2 parameters, the MOSFET parameters are given as same, right? And so since it is RC coupled, that's why the Q point of the first stage won't affect the Q point of the second stage, right? So it's enough to calculate the Q point for the one stage. So the second stage Q point will be similar. So we can write down one statement over here that since it is RC coupled, since it is RC coupled, both the stages, both the stages, DC parameters, both the stages, DC parameters are isolated. So what do you mean by it? both the stages DC parameters isolated? That means this Q point of the first stage won't affect the Q point of the second stage because in between you can see there is a capacitor. So this capacitor, which I'm marking in the yellow color over here, will isolate the DC parameters of the first stage from the DC parameters of the second stage. All right. So, and also the both the stages are symmetric. That's why it's enough to calculate the Q point for one stage, right? So additionally, we can write since both stages are symmetric in parameters and component values. Since both the stages are symmetric in parameters and component values, it's enough to calculate the Q point of 
any one states. Okay. So later on, if once we find the Q point of one states, second states Q point also will be exactly the same because they are RC coupled with uh, this capacitor and the uh, input impedance of the second states, right? Now let's start with the DC analysis. So your step number four over here, first three steps are just the, you know, observation. So now we will be solving for the DC analysis. So we will consider the first stage for our DC analysis. So for DC analysis, what is the condition? For DC analysis, we know that Xe is one upon two pi into F into C, right? Now at DC, your frequency is zero. So what will happen to Xe? Xe will be approaching infinite value. That means for DC analysis, we can open circuit. So we can open circuit all connected capacitors. We can open circuit all connected capacitors. Now, what are the connected capacitors in the circuit? Let's have a look at it. The connected capacitors are uh, CC1, right? CC CS1, CC2, then we have CS2, CC3, right? So all these capacitors will be open circuit for DC analysis. And we are considering the first stage, right? So let us draw the first stage uh, DC circuit, right? So let me draw over here. Right, so we have a MOSFET. Then we have a register RD1. Here we have RS1. This is R1. And this will be R2. Let them connect them. Let me connect them together. This will be your VDD. This is R1, RD1, RS1. Oh, sorry, that is R2. This is R2 and this will be going to the ground. Right? It's also important and vital to write the terminals. So this is gate one. This will be drain one. And this will be source one. This will be RS one, right? So now for this, we have to calculate the, uh, you know, Q point. So for calculation of Q point, First, we have to calculate VG. Now, remember the gate current flowing into the MOSFET is very, very small, approximately equal to zero. So we can easily apply a voltage division rule at the gate terminal. So what does that mean is, let me just draw and show it to you. So let's say you have R1 and you have R2. Here we have VDD and here we have a ground. So this voltage, we this is the gate terminal. Right. And here we are saying that the current is zero, right? If the current is zero, whatever is connected next circuit, it's not in material, right? So that's why we can easily calculate VG1, right? This is the gate one terminal and we can write VG1 very, very easily. So let me just write it over here, VG1. So we can easily apply a voltage division rule and we can write VG1. So VG1 will be equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 into VDD. Now let us check out what are the values of uh, R1, R2 and uh, VDD. So the supply voltage, the, the value of R2 is 18 mega ohm. And the value of R1 is 22 mega ohm. And the value of VDD is 20 volt. So substitute these values in a calculator and eventually you will get a value of VG1 as 9 volt. Okay, so the value of VG1 is 9 volt we have got, right? So moving ahead, remember ultimately we are going to find VGS and ID. So next we will find, next point, we will find VS1. Now what is VS1? Let me extend it over here. So if I extend it over here, this point will be VS1. Now the current flowing through RD1 is ID1. And the same current flows through RS1 also. So this is also ID1. 
so what is vs1 vs1 is current into resistance that is id1 into rs1 so let us write it down so vs1 will be id1 into rs1 and rs1 value is known to you so vs1 will be id1 into rs1 value is given as 820 right now no now we know the value of vg1 now we know the value of vs1 can we write vgs1 right yes so we'll write next write vgs1 will be equal to vg1 minus vs1 now vg1 is 9 volt let me just take it up uh, vg1 value is 9 volt over here and your vs1 value here let me mark it here it is 820 into id1 right so let me add over here that is vgs1 is equal to 9 volt minus 820 times id1 so let me call this equation number 1 right now uh, we have two unknowns vgs1 and id1 and we have only one equation we cannot solve this further next we have to assume that the given mosfet m1 this mosfet is called as m1 so given mosfet m1 is operating in the saturation region so let us write that condition over here let me slightly move it up now yeah so assuming assuming that mosfet is in saturation assuming that mosfet m1 is in saturation so when we assume that mosfet m1 is in saturation we can write the drain current flowing through that mosfet so we can write equation as id1 will be equal to kn1 times vgs1 minus vtn1 the whole square right so that's the equation we get when we assume that your mosfet is working in the saturation region now we can continue writing this further uh, that is id1 will be equal to kn value is given as 120 micro ampere per volt square then vgs is the unknown value and vtn1 value is given as 5 volt okay so this is the equation number 2 we get so looking at equation number 1 and 2 there are two unknowns and there are two equations vgs and id1 so we can solve them simultaneously and find out the value of id1 and vgs1 which is nothing but the q point so what we will do next step is so we'll put equation number 2 in 1 we'll substitute the value of id1 over here in equation number 1 right so put equation 2 in 1 right so what do we get let me just slightly move it up so we get vgs1 we we were writing reference as follows so vgs1 is equal to 9 minus 820 right 820 into id1 and id1 is what 120 into 10 raised to minus 6 into vgs1 minus 5 the whole square so you have to calculate the value of 820 into 120 into micro uh, i mean into 10 raised to minus 6 so we can open the bracket also so we can write that is we have to solve this now it's very easy you all can solve it simultaneously along with me so this will be 9 uh this value will be 0.0984 right and inside we will have vgs1 the whole square minus 10 vgs1 plus 25 right and now we for to open the bracket what do we get vgs1 is equal to 9 minus so 0.0984 times vgs 1 the whole square then this will be 0.984 times vgs 1 and here again you will have a minus and uh, this this will be plus actually because minus minus will become plus and this will be 25 into this factor right this fraction that will be around uh, 2.46 you all can cross check it now let me take it up 
So finally, we'll write the quadratic equation now. So if we rearrange all the terms, you will get 0 0.0984 VGS1, the whole square, plus 0 0.016 VGS1, right? You can solve it very easily. Minus 6.54 is equal to 0, right? So we got a quadratic equation in the form of VGS1. You all can solve it. Uh, you know, in your calculator. So we'll write over here, solve the equation quadratically. Okay, so solve the following equation, above equation quadratically, we get. So you can put the equation in your calculator, right? And uh, we can, uh, we will get the value of VGS1. You should get the value of VGS1 as so VGS1 will be two values, 8.07 volt or VGS1 will be equal to minus 8.23 volt. Now, which value to select, right? So there is a simple criteria to select this. VGS1 should be greater than VTN1, okay? So uh, here in this case, your VGS1 is greater than VTN1. Let us check it out. since VGS1 is greater than VTN1. And what is VTN1? Your VTN1 is nothing but 5 volt. Okay. And in this case, we have to reject the value. So this will be a reject. Now, this is my value of VGS1Q. So with this value of VGS1Q, we need to find the value of ID1. Right. So what is the step number F? Yeah. So let me add. Over here, this is ID1. We'll write the rewrite the expression of ID1. That is KN1 times VGS1 minus VTN1, the whole square. So over here, all the values are available, right? So let me just rewrite. This is 120 micro. This value we got it as 8.07. This is 5, and don't forget the square, right? So if you solve it in a calculator, the value of ID1 will be equal to, so ID1 will be equal to 1.13 milliamperes. Okay, so this is the value of ID1 which we are getting. And we got the value of VGS1 as 8.07 volt. So what is the Q point of the first stage? So finally, the Q point of the first stage will be uh q point of first stage that will be equal to vgs q1 comma id q1 okay and uh, that will be uh vgs1 is 8.07 and this will be 1.13 milliamperes. Now, since both the stages are symmetric, that what we can write, since both the stages are symmetric, we can write ID1 is equal to ID2 is equal to 1.13 milliamperes. And VGS1 is equal to VGS2 is equal to 8.07 volt. Right, and why we can write this thing? We can write this thing because the both the stages are coming out to be symmetric, right? So Q point of first stage and Q point of second stage are similar, correct? So let me write over here Q point of first stage uh, that will be equal to Q point of second stage. So our first question is solved. I mean, the first part of uh, question is solved. Next, we have to find the small signal parameter, right? So let us see which point we were on. Yeah, point number four. So remember, let's go back to the question. What are we supposed to find? So we have to find Q point for both the stages that we have done. Now we have to focus on finding AV1 and AV2. Right, and then the overall voltage gain, and followed by the output voltage, 
and the input and output resistance. Now let us go back and uh, find out the values of small signal parameters. So that is point number five. Okay, yeah. So we write over here phi and we will calculate the small signal parameters, small signal parameters of both the stages. Okay, so what are the small signal parameters? GM1. So what is the formula for GM1? Twice KN1 into VCS1 minus VTN1, right? And uh, that value is same as your GM2. Your GM1 and GM2 values are same because VGS1 value is same for both. Also, the parameters KN1 and VTN1 are same as KN2 and VTN2. So let's calculate the value of uh, GM1. So KN value is given as around 120 micro, right? Uh, the value of VGS1 just now we calculated as 8.07 and VTN1 is. 5 volt right so we calculate these values in your calculator and you will get the value of gm1 as um which is equal to gm2 and that will come out to be 0 0.7368 milliampere per volt remember the unit it will be milliampere per volt or write it in the form of milliampere per volt okay fine so that's the value of gm1 and gm2 now, another small signal parameter will be RO1 and RO2, right? But over here, we have been given, uh, let's just consider this. We have been given that lambda 1 and lambda 2 is equal to 0, right? So what will be your RO value? RO is basically 1 upon lambda ID. So both RO1 and RO2 will be equal to infinite. Now, RO1 and RO2 infinite means they are not present in the small signal model. Right, so here I can easily write over here RO1 will be equal to RO2, which will be equal to infinity. It will not affect the small signal model, they won't be present at all. Okay, fine. So we have found out these small signal parameters for the given uh, amplifier, the cascade amplifier. Now we have to find the voltage gain. So let me go back to the circuit. Okay, so if you look carefully in, uh, you know, if you look carefully at the circuit, we have derived the voltage gain in the last lecture or in the last session. Let us check it out. So it was 15.1. Let us have a look at it once, the formula, so we can write it as it is. We have solved it last time. Let me just minimize it a little. Yeah, so try to fetch the screen. Yeah, we have done the analysis of common source, common source RC coupled cascade amplifier, and we are solving a similar numerical on it. So last time we have estimated the input impedance, output impedance, and the voltage gain for the circuit. So let us check it out the formulas directly. So your Zn will be equal to Zi plus R6, where Zi will be R1 parallel to R2 and Zn will be R6 plus Zi, right? So remember this. Then uh, RO or Z out will be small RO2 parallel to RD2 parallel to RL. You all can refer the previous lecture video for this details. Then we are supposed to find the overall voltage gain AVT. So over here, AVT, this is the overall voltage gain is equal to AV1 into AV2 into Zi upon Zi plus R6, right? So remember this also, where Zi is R1 parallel to R2. And what is the formula for AV1? For AV1, we have minus GM1 into R01 parallel to RD1, parallel to R3, parallel to R4, right? Is exactly the same circuit. And uh, what is the formula for RO, I mean, AV2? We have derived this last time, so you all can refer this handout. AV2 is, AV2 was minus GM2 into RO2 parallel to RD2 parallel to RL. So you all can refer it or, or else if you have forgotten the formula, you all can quickly draw the 
small signal or mid frequency small signal equivalent circuit and you can deduce those formulas very very easily looking at the circuit okay so it's better to practice this before you attempt a numerical so let us go back to our numerical now and uh, let us uh, go back to our work of finding the voltage gain now individual stage voltage gain okay so let me just ha uh, minimize this a little and let me go back and find out now the voltage gain we have just now saw the formula now we have to calculate the voltage gain yeah so this was step number 5 for step number 6 we'll calculate the voltage gain so let me use a black color again yeah so here we'll find the voltage gain first we'll find the individual stage voltage gain and then we will uh, find the overall voltage gain so always start with the second stage so av2 was given by the formula minus gm2 into ro2 parallel to rd2 parallel to rl and that is what we have in our case now let us check it out in our case the gm2 values just now we have found out 0.7368 milli right ro2 is infinity right rd2 is given as 3 kilo ohm and rl value is around 10 kilo ohm right so uh, 3 kilo ohm parallel to 10 kilo ohm has to be multiplied with 0.7368 into 10 is to minus 3 right so you can solve this in your calculator and uh, you will get the value of av2 as minus 1.7 you can check it out you will get as a values close to this minus 1.7 okay so that's the value of av2 now next let us calculate av1 so what was the expression for av1 minus gm1 into ro1 parallel to rd1 parallel to r3 parallel to r4 right and what are the values the value of gm1 is 0.7368 milli ro1 is infinity so it's not been considered also because in parallel combination the value of the resistance is the lowest among all right so this is rd2 is 3 kilo ohm r3 is 22 mega ohm and r4 value is 18 mega ohm so first of all uh, do the parallel combination of 22 into 18 and then that number will be in parallel with 3 kilo ohms so definitely the result will be lesser than 3 kilo ohms right now and you have to multiply it with this 0.7368 into 10 is to minus 3 so if you solve this in your calculator the value of av1 will come out to be 2.209 again i repeat the value of av1 will come out to be 2.209 right so we got the value of av1 and av2 now we have to calculate the overall voltage gain that is point number 7 okay so let me calculate the overall voltage gain what was the formula avt it was av1 into av2 into uh, what was it it was zi upon zi plus r6 right and what was zi zi was r1 parallel to r2 divided by r1 parallel to r2 plus r6 okay that's fine yeah so that is what we what we get over here so we have to calculate the formula i mean we have to calculate the result over here right so let me check it out what's the value of r6 first of all r6 value is around 100 this value is around 100 and uh, this is r1 parallel to r2 so let me use a calculator and find out give me a moment so we have to calculate 22 mega ohm 
22 mega ohm into 18 plus yeah okay so let me just 22 mega ohm into 18 mega ohm divided by 22 mega ohm plus 18 mega ohm so the value is coming out to be 9.9 .9. Mega ohm, right? 9.9 .9 mega ohm. And this is also 9.9 .9 mega ohm. The combination of it, right? Because your uh, R1 value is 22 mega ohm, R2 value is 18 mega ohm. And we have found out the value of AV1 and AV2, right? So 9.9 .9 mega ohm divided by 9.9 .9 plus 100 is approximately equal to 1 only, right? So this term over here, which we get, this term, its value is approximately equal to one only, right? So your AVT is nothing but AV1 into AV2, right? And uh, here, how much is the value of AV1? We got it as minus 2.209. And how much was the value of AV2? Minus 1.7. So how much is the overall voltage gain? So overall voltage gain is coming out to be, let me use the black color. So AVT is coming out to be 3.755. Okay. So that's the value of the overall voltage gain. Now we have to calculate in dB, right? You have to calculate this number in dB. So that is why we will be multiplying it by so let me do it AVT in dB will be equal to 20 log to the base 10 of 3.755. So AVT in dB is coming out to be, if you calculate uh, the calculator, it will be 11.49 11.49 dB. So that's the value of the voltage gain in dB, right? Uh, next, after this, so we have found out the overall voltage gain. Now we have to calculate the output voltage if input voltage Vs is given as 20 millivolt, right? So now uh, let us, this is point number eight. Let us do that, let us calculate it. So basically what is the formula? I mean, what is the overall voltage gain formula? AV or we can just write AV is equal to V out upon Vs. We can just add AVT, right? So from here we can write that is V out is equal to AVT times Vs. Correct? So your Vs value is around 20 millivolt. So we can write it as and AVT we got it as 3.755 into 20 millivolt. Okay, so, so your V out, that is, your V out is equal to 75 millivolt. V out is coming out to be 75 millivolt. Now, only thing left is to calculate the input and output resistance. So, we can easily calculate that also. Let us go to point number 9. So, first we'll calculate Rn. So, Rn will be Ri plus R6. Ri or Zi and Ri is what? Ri is nothing but R1 parallel to R2 which is coming out to be 9.9 .9 mega ohm. Okay. So uh, R6 value is around 100. So 9.9 .9 mega ohm plus 100 will be approximately equal to 9.9 .9 only. Right. So here we can write that is Rn will be approximately equal to 9.9 .9 mega ohm only. Okay, this is 9.9. .9. Okay. So, yeah. Now, last thing we have to calculate is R out. Now, R out, we have estimated the formula last time. So, that was coming out to be uh, RO2 in parallel to rd2 in parallel to rl right 
and uh, according to this formula your ro2 value is infinity rd2 value is 3k and rl value is 10k so 10k in parallel to 3k that's come out to be 2.307 kilo ohms okay so that's the value of r out so that's how we have completed the entire numerical first we calculated the dc parameters the q point and the small signal parameters then the voltage gain and finally we calculate the output voltage input resistance and the output resistance for the given numerical okay so in case if you have any query you all can always ask and uh, yeah and try solving each and every step and all the calculations by yourself okay so let me go back and check if anything is left out in the numerical no everything is taken care of we have uh, we were asked supposed to find out a q point for both the stages we have completed that right so this is completed then we calculated av1 and av2 then the overall voltage gain in db v out value if input vs is given and r in and r out right so such type of numericals are always asked for around 10 marks 10 to 12 marks so see to it that every step is carefully you know evaluated and numerically correct right you should know the ranges that id1 will be in milliamperes your voltage gain will be greater than 1 and so on and so forth right so that's all for this session next time we will begin with a new topic so until then have a good day and thank you